And today I want to talk about zine trades, why you should do it, and a couple of I don't know, zine trade etiquette tips that I would give. I always like to tell you guys I'm not an expert on any of this stuff. I just like talking about it and sharing my experiences. So that's what I'm gonna do. A zine is a self-published booklet, also kind of recognized as DIY magazine. But unlike traditional magazines, zines are more focused on self-expression, they're not really for profit, they're just about experimentation and exploration and community. Traditional magazines are more focused on selling ad space and making money and they're released on a regular schedule and they're kind of pricey to make and kind of expensive to buy. Zines on the other hand, are they're the total opposite of that. They're more fun, they could be about pretty much anything that you wouldn't find in a magazine. If that was confusing, I do have a video on the difference between zines and magazines and essentially what makes a zine a zine, so you should definitely check that video out. It's the very first video on my channel. And now that we know what a zine is, what is a zine trade or exchange and why should I participate? Well, according to my notes here, because I'm very anal about making sure I know what to say, a zine trade is when you give your zines to someone in exchange for their zines. Swapping zines is essential for zine culture because it sticks to its theme of being anti-capitalist and accessible. Not to say that you shouldn't or can't make money from your zines, you totally should if you want to, but the heart of zines is based on community and being accessible. So if you're able to do a zine trade, it's really good for the community because you're able to get more people exposed to zines. Zine trades also encourage readers to become zine makers themselves. So if someone wants to trade a zine with you, they have to make one, right? To be able to exchange one. So I think it encourages um, creativity. So you're giving the gift of zines, but you're also giving the gift of making someone else make something. Is that manipulative? I don't know. I think it, if, can it be manipulative if the outcome is good? Back to my notes, back to my notes. Okay, trading zines is also very cool because you get exposed to work you might not otherwise come across. You know how many times someone has sent me their zine to my PO box and once I saw it, I was like, wow, I so would have bought this if I knew it existed. So there's so many zines out there, guys, that are just sitting on shelves, websites, in bookstores, in music stores, all over the world that you'll never be exposed to unless you open yourself up to trading or exchanging with zine makers that you find online or you meet at Zine Fest or, you know, anywhere. I've traded zines at the post office once where I was sending mail and someone struck, struck up a conversation with me. I told them I was sending off zines. They had some zines in their um, purse. It wasn't their zines they went to a zine fest and saw some zines and they're like you know what i might as well gift this to someone that could really appreciate it not to say that they didn't appreciate it i just think that they were it was just a nice gesture because we had such a nice conversation and they gave me some random zines that they got from a zine fest in canada i would have never been exposed to that unless that person was open to trading it really opens your world up to the awesome world of diy creation okay. my notes say how to trade zines. Very simplest ways to trade zines is to explore the zine hashtags on TikTok and Instagram. Go through those hashtags, look at all the awesome zines on there. If you see one that you really like, I would definitely recommend you strike up a conversation with the creator and then offer a trade. Usually a very nice and respectable way to ask for a trade is first look at their bio in their TikTok or their Instagram and see if they accept DMs because a lot of times people won't because they get overwhelmed with how many they're getting or it's just a personal preference. So first look that they accept DMs first before you DM them. If they have another method of contact, contact them that way. Usually what I do is I introduce myself, um, say that I'm a zine maker and I was looking at their zines and I was really interested in trading. You can ask for specific zines but usually what I tend to do is let them decide which zines they want to send to me and then we set up a trade. And when you approach zine makers this way, I want you to keep a couple things in mind for your safety and the safety of others. Um, I, oh my gosh, my notes, they're, <laughs> they're just as crazy as my brain. <laughs> they're not really that organized. Okay, three things to keep in mind. Okay, one, if you're outside of the country, let them know up front and ask them if they're comfortable with international trades. I've learned a lot from doing this. I'm in the United States, but a lot of times people will ask me to trade and they're in UK or they're in Australia or one time someone was in Singapore all fine and good but what they always did was ask me first if I was okay with doing an international trade because sometimes it's more expensive to send to their country you don't know you can send um, zines through the mail like by a letter if you buy international forever stamps I think right now they're about a dollar 
and 60 cents. That's what I do, so it's cheaper and I'm not spending like 25 bucks to send a parcel. Sometimes if I send mail like that, it was cheap for me to send, but then they end up having to pay a bunch of fees, custom fees for me sending it to them. So you really wanna make sure that the person you're interacting with and wanting to trade with is comfortable with international trades if you guys aren't in the same country because it could be a little bit more expensive for them. The second thing I want you to keep in mind is age limit. This is definitely a preference, um, a personal preference, but I tend to only trade with people that are 18 years old and up. The reason for that is because a lot of my zines aren't very kid friendly and I've done trades in the past where I didn't realize they were a child and their parents got really mad at me for the zines that I sent them, which was totally understandable. It was an honest mistake, just something I didn't really consider when I was first doing trades online. So I would definitely ask them their age and use discretion. I would highly recommend not sending to a child though. I think it's a little bit inappropriate. And also I'm like in favor of protecting children. Like I have good intentions and I'm sure you absolutely have good intentions, but there's a lot of people in the world that don't. And I don't want to let that slide and be like, okay I could trade with this child this time and then they in their mind think it's okay to trade with all adults that approach them with zine trades. I just think it's a little bit unsafe and just to be on the side of caution I just choose not to trade zines with children with mail. Like we can trade um, PDFs like I'll email you know a kid and we can trade zines that way but to have a child give me their address through a DM or through email seems a little inappropriate and as someone that's older, I want to protect children. So keep that in mind. I don't want them sending their address to strangers. You know, they don't, it's, it's like, I think it's in our best benefit to protect them by just not doing that. My third note, actually I have two more. So number three is be patient. So everyone has a life outside of zines. So please be patient during the trade and not try to badger them too much. When you're about to trade, just accept the fact that you may have to wait a little bit. You can always set up boundaries and tell them when you're expecting to send their zine and when you would prefer to have one sent back, but just try to be understanding that people have lives. Sometimes like as creative people, we can like lose our train of thought. See, I'm doing it right now. I lost my train of thought about losing my train of thought. You want to try to be understanding if someone lags a little bit and just know that that's a part of that's a part of trading. A lot of zine makers, we're a lot of, we're, we're, we're a bunch of odd people. So I wouldn't take it personal. Like what I like to do is I just give someone my PO box and I tell them send at your own pace. And when I receive yours, I'll ret send back to the return address. So that way there's no time urgency on it or any pressure and they feel comfortable sending whenever they want. And number four, be safe when trading. If you have any discomfort or have any weird gut feelings about someone asking you to trade or giving your address away, say no fearlessly. It's okay to say no and don't care what they think either because your safety is your number one concern. You don't owe anyone a trade and don't let anyone pressure you. I've had that happen to me a lot where someone really wanted a specific zine of mine and the way that I make that zine is just, I put a lot of effort into it, so I would prefer that people purchase that one because it, it, it's kind of made to order. I didn't make a bunch of them, they're very limited. But someone was really adamant about wanting that specific zine and they were pressuring me and they weren't really offering a trade. They were just like, hey, can you just send me that zine? And I was like, I could send you some of these other zines and they're like, no, I want that zine. And I was like, okay, I have to say no. I have to put my foot down because I don't feel comfortable with that. And I don't care what you think. So always use your own discretion and always make sure that you're comfortable with the trade. Also be careful and use discernment when giving out your address. Okay, so I have a PO box. I tell them my PO box and have them send to me first because I don't want to have people send their address to me online. But if you can't afford a PO box, just be careful with giving out your address. If you can't afford it, try a PO box because it is a bit safer. I, I can't imagine not having a P.O. box. I've had people send crazy things to my P.O. box that I would not have liked sent to my actual home. So just be careful. There's a lot of, there's a lot of weird people out there. I mean, I know we're all weird, but there's some, 
other kind of weird people out there and you want to be safe. So I think I talked about email earlier, but that's another way that you can trade. You can always send PDF scans of your zines to people through email. Just always make sure that you ask first. Never just randomly send your zines to someone and bombard them asking them for advice or critique on it. Well, you can always send your zines to me, but sometimes people are a little bit pushy and they're like, hey, here's my zine. Can you read this and give me a critique by this time? And it's like, whoa, I'm not your professor. No, I'm not gonna do that so always be mindful when you're sending your zines to someone through their email and make sure that they can hold space for you and energy to be able to read your zines and trade with them okay so always ask if it's okay just put it in the body of your email like hey i hope that it's okay that i'm sending you my zines i would really love your feedback or i would really love a trade is this okay with you that's a, it's as simple as that to make sure that people feel appreciated and you're not just you know bombarding their energy or their time other ways that you can trade is to um, go to zine workshops, visit or be um, tabling at a zine fest, or you could use community boards online. I will link a few in the description where you can post um, some of your zines online or even post the inquiry to trade. And there's a lot of cool people that I've met online that way and we've traded zines that way, so that's another cool way. I guess that's it. Yeah, the online forums, blah, blah, blah. And then my last note says, it's that easy and so fun. Okay, so now I want to go and show you some of the zines that I've got in a trade recently. I actually got them this week, so I'm really excited to show you some of them and I will um, put everything in the description box. So without further ado, let's do a little zine tour. So these are some of the zines and goodies that I got this week. That's another thing to keep in mind that when you trade zines, you can also trade additional things like prints or stickers or comics. It, it doesn't have to be solely zines you can send as many goodies as you want. This is one of the first ones that I wanted to show you guys. This one's really cool because it is sun printed. Um, there's a term for it called, um, I might butcher it, cyanotype, Cy Cy um, cyanotype or something. It's when you um, use the sun to print negatives onto paper or shirts or something. If you're interested in that, I have a couple tutorials on my website, but this is what it looks like. And this is from someone I made friends with online named Elle, and I will link their um, Instagram and everything in the description. But this was printed using um, that cyanotype can, I'm, I'm so butchering it, but using some of that, um, it's like a dye. It's, it's very sensitive to sunlight. And then when you put an image you, you put the dye on the paper and then you put a negative over it, put it out in the sun, and then it has this cool little dyeing effect. <sighs> I, don't, I don't know if I'm making sense, but watch the tutorials in my webs on my website and you'll kind of see the process. Isn't that so cool? So that's a print that they sent me and then they also sent me their zine. The whole entire zine is sun printed, guys. But look at how amazing that is. This will focus on it. Look at that! And I think you would be more amazed if you understood this process. Not to say that you don't understand it, I'm, I just think I'm butchering the way that I'm trying to describe how it's done. But please look up this process, look at how tedious and time consuming it is, and then come back and appreciate the zine for being freaking awesome. This is the name of their shop, I believe. And I can't believe I own this. I'm so excited. I think I, I, um, we did kind of a trade, but then I bought additional zines. I wanted like three copies of this because I wanted to give them out to people that I thought may like it. So this is a really cool trade that I did this week with Elle. I just, I love it. Okay, so the next one is a bunch of stuff, okay? This is from Mihorita's Collective. Please don't laugh at me if I pronounce that wrong. Please go follow them. They make amazing zines and art. It's just a collection of stuff. It's not just zines, they make incredible things. They sent me stickers. So that's something you could send in a trade. They sent me a little mini comic which describes their brand. Look at that, more stickers. And then a zine from their editor. So it says, I'm sharing a mini zine by our editor, Ariana Ortiz. So then this came in it too. And it's just a mini zine, really, really talented stuff, really cool. Also, they made a zine of me. We had like a little interview about my zine making process, what got me into zines. And this is the little mini zine they sent me that they made of the answers that I gave them for the interview. I saw this and I was like, when I opened the mail and saw my own face, I was like, I'm fucking hot. Moving on. 
This one is, this trade I did was an international trade with someone in Canada named Sonali. These are the zines that I wanted to share. And it's just giving you an idea of what zines could be about. This one is depression cooking. It says easy recipes from when you're feeling depressed as fuck. This is just what zines are all about, right? It's sharing information on stuff that you would not find in a traditional magazine. I can guarantee you, you will not find this title in a magazine at Target. That's what makes zines so cool, guys. Like, you can make a zine about anything. And this one is also by Sonali, and it says, you're so exotic. I thought this was really interesting, being a person of color myself. But I love hearing Sonali's own personal experience with this. Like, I feel connected to them after reading their zine. But those were Sonali zines. And now, you guys, okay. This zine is so cute. There is a standard size version and a mini zine version of the same zine. These are by Serena. That's the Spanish pronunciation of their artist name. The English version is Siren. So look at this. Look at what they made. It looks like a composition book. Isn't that amazing? Like, isn't that really cool? Okay, so the first one, it's like a, um, what is it called? Like a coloring zine. So when you open it, it has all these pages inside that you can color, which I think the line art is amazing. I really, really enjoyed looking through this. And I was excited about this one. And then I saw that there was a mini zine version and I freaking lost my shit. I went crazy. I was like, this is so adorable and so cute. Look at how cool. And you could color all that in. Amazing. And it also came with some stickers. This one I think is really cool. So I wanted to give a little shout out. And like I said, all of the artist names and their Instagrams will be in the description if you wanted to go follow them or ask them for a trade. That's all that I wanted to talk about in this video. I wanted to give you guys a little bit of zine trading tips, some etiquette. Like I said, I may be wrong about a lot of things. I don't know. I'm just going based off how I do the trades. If you have any tips at all about zine trading or zine exchanges, definitely leave them in the comments. I think they're going to be really helpful for anybody watching this. And... Go make zines, go freaking trade zines, like why are you still here watching me?